Hey, yeah, you want to be smart? Don't, don't do what I did. I made the, uh, the critical mistake of asking my audience for a video topic. Like, uh, half a year ago, I gave you guys two choices. The shortstop or demo night. And naturally, you guys being the most predictable fucking audience on the planet, I mean, I made, I made a video about this already. But you know what? You know what's worst? The worst, worst of all. And I said, fuck. But you know what worst? Just, I just can't fuck. You know, glasses are off. I'm getting pissed now. I said you guys are predictable because I already know what's going to happen. I already know. I'm going to have to deal with the dumbest, most redundant, dead joke in all of human history. You know, you got your socks. You have your chungus. You have your glizzies and caps and XYZ gaming repeated 400,000 times because, you know, haha, -ha, repeating the same thing over and over again. Funny. But worst of all. God. Uh, the fact that the next half hour or so is going to be spent saying the word demo night not once but multiple times means that there will be no constructive feedback there will be no interesting comments there will be zero meaningful interactions at all as a result of this video no 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 just a bunch of brain dead reddit dwelling troglodytes smashing their keyboards with their swollen hands typing out the same stupid sh over and over and over again. I just don't fucking get it. Wow, Epic Gamer, you said a thing too. Here's an updute. Here's a Reddit gold. Ah, oh, God, it's like sensory fucking overload. I just, I can't handle it. I don't fucking, glasses are back on now. Getting serious now. I don't get it. What's the fuck? What the hell do you want? I'm reading the script, aren't I? Uh, yes, hello, this is the Reddit police. You've not been very wholesome 420 Keanu Chungus today. How the hell did you get in my apartment? Get out of here, you bloated fuck. Grab his legs, get hold him down, hold him up in his mouth and make him break the floor. Get the fuck off me, get the fuck off me, no, get the fuck away from me. Grab his legs, tie him by the knees and get his hands behind his back. You put a gun fucking gag in his mouth. Get him in there, get his fucking ass in that truck. Go, 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 get his ass, we gotta get him out the fucking way. Get him back to fucking wholesome island, go. Get the fuck out of the car, you lazy fuck, let's go. Get the fuck out of the car, you fuck out
If you take away the guns from the demo man, what do you got left? A bottle. 65 damage per swing on the third slowest class in the game. It's not all that intimidating. So how do you make this bottle stand toe to toe with all of these? Demo Knight. Yeah! Shut the fuck up! The shields do most of the work, that's a fact, while Demo Man's assortment of melee weapons just act as damage conduits for the guaranteed crit. Generally speaking, it really doesn't matter what melee you use on Demo Knight. They all deal the same damage, aside from the skull cutter, of course. Ergo, the bottle is really not all that different from any sword. It just lacks slightly extended melee range and any attributes that incentivize melee combat. The bottle lacks a deploy speed penalty, unlike a vast majority of other options, so it's pretty useful if you get caught out without a shot loaded and need that faster damage, or if someone suddenly manifests inside of your collision hull. Stop lets you be far more aggressive in these short-lived situations, since you can quickly swap back and forth between grenades and melee, allowing for more combo opportunities. They're random crits. It's quick damage on demand, unlike the rest of Demo Man's options. I find that the stock bottle pairs best with the charge and charge on Hybrid Knight. You have way more effective health and are likely not charging all that often anyways. And when you do, you have the health buffer to ensure that you don't die, at least not easily. The Splendid Screener Tide Turner? Yeah, sure, more frequent charges, chances to escape, but man, that extra health is just too good to pass up when you're focusing on pipes over charges. However, stock melee doesn't reward well-planned charges like the other swords do, so on full demo night, yeah, I mean, sure, stock is okay? But if you're throwing away your other gun, you might as well use a sword that rewards you for constant melee combat. Like the Islander. Here's your precious meta, you fuckers. I'm gonna give it the proper treatment this time around. The Islander is objectively the best option for full demo night, and I don't like that. Everything else just pales in comparison, suffering from syringe gun syndrome thanks to the existence of a massively superior option. Hell, just like my video on the overdose, I asked you guys what sword you prefer the most, and just like the Crusader's crossbow, an overwhelming majority of players use the Islander. And I understand why. The snowballing upsides with each head just can't be beat. Why would you ever use anything else when those upsides let you run faster than a scout? with more health than a heavy against two damage types, and with the ability to deal over 300 damage in a quarter of a second. Nothing holds a candle to that. The Islander is simply too good. It's kind of broken in casual games, because you can just farm brain-dead players for heads and enjoy pseudo-invincibility. Because if you get caught out without your charge, or if you miss a swing, you can just bitch out and wait for your shield to recharge. You're being coddled by so much extra health and speed that nothing can get close enough to kill you, unless you play really, really stupid. Any shield pairs with the Islander too. The charge and charge inflates your health to ridiculous ridiculous levels. And then with overheal? Good god! The splendid screen lets you one-shot light classes by just clipping their collision hull. And the tide turner, arguably the weakest choice with this sword, can still be paired with movement speed faster than a scout and instant charge back on kill with the highest degree of mobility in the game. Fuck me. Granted, I never come to a real reason as to why the tide turner should be used on full demo night. Because one, you don't have a guaranteed crit, so why ever use it with some something that doesn't have random crits, and two, taking any damage removes your charge, which really sucks for offense. Your burst damage is just too low, which drags out melee engagements far longer than they need to be, which in turn increases your chances of dying. Regardless of what shield you use though, the Islander has effectively no downsides on full demo night. And yeah, yeah, you're probably all screaming at me by this point. Oh well, Zesty, what about the health penalty? <laughs> yeah, you start off in an appropriately, air quotes, weak state, but that only applies to the demo man's health. After just one head, the initial downside is effectively gone, and your damage and movement speed are now better than any other option. After two heads, the Islander becomes the best choice across all aspects. Three heads or more, and the fucking training wheels come on. There are zero inherent downsides that hold this sword back at higher head counts, aside from a lack of gun, which to me isn't enough. I'm not saying the damn Islander needs a nerf. I'm just saying that the Islander is the Duplo of Demo Knight swords. If you build the little house or the little car or the cutesy little village, it's really not all that impressive compared to the 7500 piece Millennium Falcon. But on Hybrid Knight, 
The Eyelander is perfectly fine. If you use the Eyelander on Hybrid Knight, you have the girthiest, most massive cock I've ever seen. You start off at a very appropriately weak state, offset somewhat by damage resistances. You don't break the highest speed and health thresholds in the game without some serious work on your part. And if you manage to get two or three heads, the faster movement speed and health paired with a grenade launcher are awesome. Zipping around and hucking pipes into people, going for the occasional kill on a straggler is insanely fun. But I digress. The Eyelander is the best choice for full Demo Knight, beating all others by a huge margin. And I hate that. And no, I'm not being angry contrarian to elicit negative responses for clicks. Oh, rubbing my old hands together here. And just because someone's opinions or the demeanor in which they present them in differs from yours doesn't mean they're faking it to piss you off. It's just a shame that all the other swords get overlooked for a set of fucking training wheels. overlooked like the Persian Persuader, which would be THE best full demo knight sword if the Eyelander didn't exist. Charge back on hit, kill, and from ammo packs brings the demo knight up to the pace he should be in order to keep up with the fast-paced nature of the game. The Persuader is very effective, but it's not a set of training wheels because you aren't being propped up by extra speed, health, and damage at all times. Its upsides fully rely on your ability to play demo knight effectively, but if you fuck up a charge, or miss a swing, you're fucked, and you should be fucked, just as you should be with any other Demo Knight loadout. Demo Knight should always be held back by these two downsides. Demo Man's core design is built upon insane burst damage at the cost of time and self-security. Despite Demo Knight flipping the class's core concept on its head, it's still balanced in the exact same way. So if the game gives you the necessary upsides to fight as the melee-only gimmick class and you can't wield them properly, don't expect the game to hold your hand. And you know what? The Eyelander kind of holds your hand. Ah, it holds both your hands and it spoon feeds you kills. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and say hi to mommy for me. I'm gonna stick with the Persian Persuader because this chick just pats me on the back and sends me off to work. What's very interesting about the Persian Persuader is that it's one of the few items in TF2 that violates the core balancing aspects of the class it's designed for, but not in a way that disrupts the flow of the game. In this particular case, the Persian Persuader offsets one of Demo Man's key weaknesses, downtime. Waiting for your shit to reload. This downtime typically curbs Demo Man's burst damage, so it's fair and tolerable. Shield recharge is exactly like not having any shots in your sticky bomb launcher and needing to reload. With the Persian Persuader, however, in exchange for a fair amount of skill, risk, or time spent away from the fight grabbing ammo packs, you get to circumvent this downtime. It's still well balanced, because you must constantly put yourself at risk to reap the constant temporary rewards of chaining charges, instead of, you know, being carried by extra health, speed, and damage at all times. I see no strong need to discuss the nuances of chaining charges, you guys likely get it, you know, zip zip zoom zoom, but I will reiterate again, the Persian Persuader has similar potential to the Eyelander, weaker, but similar, packed into a far more balanced design. Let's see, other notes I have here. Ah uh, yeah, another, uh, another tactic or gimmick, it's a gimmick really, is that you can pick up ammo packs mid-charge to increase its duration. For the sake of effectiveness, this tactic really isn't all that practical. The chances of pulling this off successfully are slim to none, especially because ammo packs need to be in just the right spot, and usually by the time your charge is done, your target has likely moved, but it's still a really fun and flashy way to body slam into players that don't shoot the screaming man careening towards them at Mach 9. Let's see, next random bullet point. Oh yeah, you should never use the Persian Persuader with the Tide Turner, since one kill returns, what, 120% or more of your charge? I mean, yeah, sure, it's overly efficient, but at the same time, who gives a shit about min-maxing Demo Knight? But, as I mentioned earlier, why would you ever use something that can't randomly crit with a Tide Turner? Especially on full Demo Knight. So the Persian Persuader pairs best with either of the two crit-granting shields. The Splendid Screen works 
fine, it's okay, but it's arguably the weaker option because the faster recharge rate is pointless when you get charge back from so many other sources, so you might as well just use the charge and charge and bloat your health. The lower shield bash damage is more than made up for with the frequent charges and the significantly higher health pools. This loadout is actually pretty fucking disgusting at times. I'm kinda shocked I don't see people using this more often, though I've likely shot myself in the foot by saying that. Thankfully, I've stocked up. The Half Zatoichi is probably the only sword that is equally viable for either Hybrid Knight or Full Demo Knight. Overheal of any kind with damage resistances is extremely powerful, to say the least. But so long as there are significant risks and downsides that eat away at that health, it's largely balanced, and the Zatoichi is no exception. On Hybrid Knight, the Zatoichi is a great finisher weapon that gives your health back after a fight, so long as you can pick off a straggler and secure the kill. Secure, because that honor bound downside forces you to commit, so either you get that kill or you die trying. However, overheal does negate this sword's only significant downside, so if you have a medic on your team it's largely of no concern. Only a concern if you whip it out as a last resort on low health, but you know, high risk, high reward. On full demo night, however, there is no downside to using the Zatoichi. It's just the stock bottle with extra range and 100 health per kill. And 300 health with damage resistances is nothing to scoff at. It's actually really, really good. Look. Ah, it's a lot. But since you're limited to your melee and can't immediately charge away after getting a kill or run faster than a scout to escape, that health gets eaten away pretty quickly if you decide to take on more than one target. Like the Islander, the half Zatoichi pairs best with the splendid screen on full demo night, since you can charge more often and utilize your only significant means of burst damage. Again, why ever use the Tide Turner with something that can't crit? Now on Hybrid Knight, however, I find that the half Zatoichi actually pairs best with the Tide Turner. It makes makes finishing off stragglers much easier, and you can get your charge back almost instantly, letting you combo pipes with sword kills. And yes, of course, enemy players using the Satoichi can one-shot you, and yes, of course, as soon as someone sees you using the Satoichi, they just have to use it too, which leads to some very interesting engagements. <laughs> and now for something completely different. We can all collectively agree on one thing. The Kaber is in a really, really sad state. Yeah, being able to one-tap medics after flying through the air and also dealing splash damage to anyone nearby with no penalty other than next to no damage on a spent Kaber was a little bit broken, but it didn't need to be nerfed this fucking hard, my god! Yeah, you can still use it on regular demo, man if you're dumb, and if you agree to light classes Johnson with your fist, you might be able to one-shot them. But hell, in my eyes, the caber was never meant to be this super fair and fun item to begin with. Just a suicide play that almost guarantees mutual destruction in the fun gun game. Amazing. <laughs> But then, naturally, a small handful of players seethed about this item, among others, and they all got nerfed into oblivion. Now that I'm thinking about this more in post, a vast majority of players never had a problem with the caber. And then after Valve nerfed it into the floor, everyone unanimously hated what they did to it. Gee, where have I heard this story before? And now the slower swing speed and slower deploy time are just so fucking punishing. The lower damage and janky hit reg, which has always been a problem, are just not worth the risks of waiting to use this thing. Because by the time you pull it out, you're already in the fucking grave. And if you miss your swing, you're six feet under. And if by some fucking miracle you haven't died yet, you're waiting so long to swing again, if I haven't already made it clear, you're dead. Dead. The caber's only saving grace is Hybrid Knight. At least a crit caber does about 359 damage, and combined with your shield bash, an additional 50 to 85 damage at most, you can almost one shot a fully overhealed heavy. And if you, you know, charge into the entire enemy team. Yeah, and now you're gonna die wearing that stupid little hat. But even after a successful crit swing that may or may not have killed anything, you remove a quarter or more of your health, and are left with a melee weapon that always does lower, slower damage. Miraculously, but only slightly higher DPS than the hot hand. It's fucking awful. You're only using the caber on demo night if you're going for that rush of an insta-kill on that medic combo that just won't fucking die. That femboy fuckstick furry medic has their medigun so far up their groomer boyfriend soldier's ass and your team 
team just can't understand how to target a fucking medic. My god, just remove the slower deploy time or the slower swing speed on this thing. Then the caber would be infinitely better than it is now. Just one, either one, please, Jesus. <laughs> the Scotsman Skullcutter. I'd say that this is the only sword axe, whatever, that you'd want to consistently use with the Tide Turner. Why? Mini crits deal 105 damage. I could end the segment there and we'd be done. However, let's go a little bit deeper. You can one-shot five out of the nine classes when combined with a shield bash, or two-tap anything, aside from an overhealed soldier or heavy. But the Skull Cutter also deals random crits, and all that damage just feeds back into more random crits. So the insanely high burst damage snowballs into even more random burst damage, turning yourself into a hypermobile death machine that is only stopped once enough people are aware of your presence or until you run out of shit to kill. This insane snowballing of damage is THE reason why none of the other swords should have random crits. Anyone remember the Hav Satoichi when that thing used to crit? And when the Tide Turner briefly granted full crits? Jesus. Fuck! I am glad they nerfed the shit out of the Tide Turner, because even now, it's still very good. And well balanced. The potential mobility it grants is second to none. But if you have extremely heightened mobility, more so than anything else in the game, you should be more vulnerable. Anyways, the Skull Cutter is broken thanks to random crits, especially on full demo night with the Tide Turner. On hybrid night, it's slightly less broken? You can circumvent the slower movement speed penalty until just the right moment, but without your balls being cut by the booties, you enter slightly higher risk versus reward territory. If you miss a swing, you're only briefly screwed, because you can't catch up to whatever you're chasing. But of course, you can just put the Skull Cutter away and just shoot whatever you're chasing with a pipe. Plus, any melee Melee kills essentially refill your charge meter instantly anyways, so you can still chain kills together, just slightly slower. Now then, what about the other two shields? Some may think that we have the opposite problem compared to any other sword. Why would someone ever use the Splendid Screen or the Charge and Charge with the Skull Cutter? You effectively have guaranteed crits anyways, your movement speed, even with the booties, is still slower than the demo man's base speed, so why sacrifice lateral mobility while using the weapon that desperately needs it to be broken? Sure, you can still be rather effective with mostly linear charges and guaranteed crits, yet the other two shields are just, I mean, they're just okay? Slower movement speed means shorter charging distance. I mean, no shit. But with the shorter charging distance, with more linear charges, you have far less lateral wiggle room to engage the closer targets that the Skull Cutter excels against, meaning you're more likely to miss your mark within the effective charging range of this melee. Not that missing the crit window matters, you got plenty of those up your sleeve, it's just about about closing the distance. And if you miss your mark, you're a sitting duck against whatever you were chasing. You can't catch up to them unless it's a heavy or a soldier, and you lack any gun to help you out. This is the case with any shield, but you'll definitely experience this more often with the Targe and the Splendid Screen on full Demo Knight. However, on Hybrid Knight, these two shields are really good with the Skull Cutter. When you inevitably fuck up a charge, you can just swap to a gun and shoot the guy. You have higher resistances to work with when you're charging or if you get caught out, and if anyone gets close to you, you pretty much have a crit waiting for them. And hey, if you're playing full Demo Knight anyways, you might as well just use the Islander in the Splendid Screen and eventually deal more damage than you would with the Skull Cutter in the Splendid Screen. Oh, remember when I said about training wheels? Fuck! Main takeaway here is that random crits have no business being on the Skull Cutter. It's an easy fix though, just do this. Now it's perfectly balanced. Unless you already happen to enjoy a version of the game that sucks the soul out of TF2 by turning it into diet competitive, but hey, your preference is not mine. Link to my website and my TF2 server in the description below. Full vanilla server, random crits, random bullet spread, no class limitations, no custom content, very wide juicy map pool, come on down. Well now, since I have your attention, I might as well let you guys in on a little secret. A small nugget of wisdom, a pearl, if you would, of knowledge and joy. There's this little game that's been floating around in whispers through the internet. A certain mobile game with top-of-the-line graphics, tons of characters, action-packed games, stellar does not goodies, and epic loot. You oh, fuck off. 
Yeah, I hate the idea of shilling shit I don't want to use for money. So this video is sponsored entirely by me. This is a one-man show. There ain't no team, there's no storyboard artist, there ain't no sound guy, there's no editor, there's no main talent whose voice and face acts as the front for a mediocre spectacle that is a TF2 video. Aside from a handful of wonderfully talented artists who lent me their skills for some assets that I can't make on my own, I made this. And you guys paid for it. Heck, without my patrons, honestly, this video wouldn't have been possible. And since most of my videos get demonetized for, you know, a variety of reasons, excessive swearing not being one of them, I assure you, pornography, your support is all the more appreciated. So, if you want to support me, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> and, if you want to go the extra mile, I do have a Patreon. You get Discord access, bonus content, progress updates, and some other goodies mixed in here and there. Thanks, guys. I really do appreciate it. At this point, Mr. Hammond hoved into view. God, is that a Mark 10? That is a Mark 10. Oh. That's a, that's a that, properly villainous jag. That is a proper jag. Jag, oh, yes. Whatever you do, okay, do not tell him that. No, no. Hammond, you idiot. What? Next up is the Claymore. I have a very weird love-hate relationship with this sword. I mostly love it, because I think this is the best sword for Hybrid Knight, but I have a very small amount of hatred for it, because of this stupid fucking stat right here. Don't get me wrong, that 15% damage vulnerability while active is an absolutely necessary drawback, because if you have extremely heightened mobility, you should be more vulnerable. However, I absolutely fucking despise how damage vulnerabilities are handled in TF2. Every single instance of a damage vulnerability is on a melee weapon, which in my eyes is a hideously counterintuitive approach, because all of these weapons incentivize melee combat, where you are are the most vulnerable. Granted, the Claymore is more widely advertised as a mobility tool rather than a combat tool, much like the Power Jack, so its downside is slightly more tolerable in that regard. Again, you know, mobility in exchange for vulnerability, but they're still fucking melee weapons. They still have upsides that encourage you to hit people with them, both the Power Jack and the Claymore, so it doesn't make fucking sense to me. Fuck! Anyway, I'll just chill. We're zen. We're zen. We're good. Despite the stupid stat. The Claymore is actually my favorite Demo Knight sword. It's great for escapes, for traversing the map to fight, for picking off someone from around a corner. The number of plays widens drastically with this sword, that I barely use anything else at this point. Ugh. And yes, when you pair this thing with the Tide Turner, you can trim! Greasiest skit I ever seen, Chris Angel Mind Freak looking motherfucker. Yeah, trimping is cool to look at and all, but the wacky and wild epic trimping frags, whoa, zip, zip, zoom, zoom, demo night TF2, here, read this, aren't widely applicable inside your average game of TF2. Flashy kills only work against bad players. And hey, I don't I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. God forbid I say something people don't want to hear, but I gotta break it to you. You know those bloated epic 50 kill streak frag Montages? Those are just moderately experienced players farming fresh installs that likely don't even know how to call for medic. So you're better off using any other tactic that doesn't make you overshoot your targets. Not to mention, the damage vulnerability offsets the damage resistances on the Tide Turner. They might as well not even be there. So personally, if you want to, you know, take my advice and be a good player, the Claymore pairs best with the Charge and Targe. I mostly use it for these long distance cleanup kills. The damage resistances offset the damage vulnerability and the longer charges are perfect for picking off those isolated players that get cut off from their team. Most players can't really gauge the minimum safe distance from a demo knight anyways, let alone one with half second longer charges, so they think they're safe, but well, you know. A word of advice though, never use the clade more on full demo knight. Well, at least with anything other than the charge and charge. The longer charges are simply not worth the ever present damage vulnerability, unless you have the charge and charge to offset them a bit. As before, you effectively have have no resistances with the other two shields. Headshots do 173 damage. Ah, sucks dick. But the Claymore is really good with Hybrid Knight. Yeah, the damage vulnerability does suck. I fucking hate it, but I personally think it's the best choice for Hybrid Knight. What? There's one more. Oh, I forgot about this stupid thing. I mean, the pain train is just, I mean, 
Yeah, you can kind of use it on full demo night, but that damage vulnerability is present. So it's not practical unless you're on this or going for a on Okay, that's enough with the fucking boom. I get it. All right, that's enough. Okay, that last statement, however indecipherable, is the common stance taken on the pain train. Why ever use this thing when you have an ever-present 10% damage vulnerability against bullets? Well, here's an argument. The pain train is technically better than the Claydemore on Demo Night. Technically, at least on paper. Stats-wise, the pain train is just better. It's only got a 10% damage vulnerability against bullets, rather than a 15% damage vulnerability against everything. As before, the Claydemore's vulnerability eats away at shield resistances far more than you may think. The charge and charge effectively becomes the splendid screen, and the other two shields might as well not have any resistances at all. And if we compare the effective health pools between the Claydemore and the Pain Train, Ah, I mean, I know what I'm gonna pick. And what's more, if we compare the damage taken against the Scattergun between the Claydemore and the Pain Train, the difference is so slight that within the effective range of Demo Knight, you're gonna die just as quickly no matter what melee you're using. Maybe one less shot at just the right position. Maybe a fraction of a second faster against a minigun or a sentry. Do note that Demo Man holds these two weapons differently. He has a wider stance with the Pain Train, meaning fewer pellets miss their mark at a greater distance. Hence why he takes more damage than the Claydemore demo after a certain point, but not by much. Not to mention hitbox orientation changes so rapidly that this slight difference hardly manifests in actual play, so this is just for bare bones experimentation purposes, I assure you. Oh, it's, 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 this is a real gameplay. It's not a real gameplay. You gotta show the real game. You're not doing it right. So, ditching the Claymore means that you sacrifice longer charges and extended melee range, but with the pain train, you get more health and random crits. And on full demo night, Ah, crits and health are worth more than gold, plus the doubled capture rate is a fairly impactful bonus, so long as you're on offense or on King of the Hill. But for Hybrid Knight, yeah, stick with the Claymore, since you can pick those opportune moments to whip it out and avoid the damage vulnerability. Can't wait for people to explode in the comments because I said the pain train's viable. <sighs> Ooh, I mean, hey, it's not the worst choice for full demo night. Probably the second, or the third, yeah, fix this fucking thing. Well, I want to cover a few more topics, but I need to cut it off at some point. There's a certain balance to be maintained when you're covering more sensitive issues and spicier topics, but we'll save those for next time. Yet, there's nothing quite like spending the greater part of the past half hour talking about a melee-only gimmick inside of a 15-year-old first-person shooter. I mean, that's what Demo Knight is. He's a gimmick. Much like Trollger or Fat Scout, Battle Medic, etc., etc. Just because you can make the loadout doesn't mean that it should stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the main classes, with everything else. Demo Knight is fun because he isn't always on the same playing field. That doesn't mean he isn't viable, but see here, when you offer players a variety of choices inside of a mechanically satisfying base game, with varying degrees of effectiveness or wackiness, mind you, it keeps the game fresh. It's why TF2 has remained so successful throughout the years, and many other titles have come and gone. Personally, I think players often fall off the track of what keeps TF2 fun in favor of watering it down for a more, you know, modern version of what a first-person shooter should be. Oh god, but whatever. It's not like we're ever gonna see another intentional balance change for TF2 anyways, aside from a bug fix implemented as an afterthought. I just wish more people preserved the nature of the game, and though I guarantee closing a demo night video with these thoughts is gonna piss people off. I mean, hey, you know what? If you don't like it, that's fine. You can just go, you know, yell in the comments section or cry about it on Twitter like the rest of those fuckers whose collective talent can't match what I have in the tip of my goddamn pinky finger. It's a shame we all live in a time where a difference of opinion means you want someone fucking dead.
this young girl is a racist. <laughs> 